Well, I think okay. So this is what this is okay. So this is uh, this is an interesting one as I think it really comes down to your goals too. Uh, sure. Yeah. From 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 a from a profitability standpoint, purely a profit standpoint, specialization honestly more often than not is the way to go. It's not the only way to go, but you will find in terms of getting work that yes. is that 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 is the way to go. Yes. But if your goal is self-sufficiency, right, then that's when you learn as much as you can about all these different things. Um, it's always good as no matter where you are, whether you're choosing to be a specialist or whether you're choosing to be a, a self-sufficient person, right? Those are, and those are two examples. There's other, there are other paths you can take in the, in the art. I'm somewhere sure. in the middle between self-sufficient and specialization, somewhere in the middle there. But um, the thing, but the thing about it is, I think it's it's wise if you're going to be a specialist to at least explore like the areas you want to specialize in. Explore a little bit about how each of them works because it it will make you a better communicator, right? Yes. Even if you are, let's say you're a specialist drummer, but you understand a little bit of how the bass guitar functions and in linking everything together, the lead guitar, the singer, you understand a little bit of those dynamics. It mm -hmm. actually makes you be able to do your music better. You'll understand your role a lot more. You'll have a much more clear purpose with that, what the, what yes. the musicians are going for, your fellow bandmates are going for in, in, in the albums and stuff like that. But at the same time, but you're still, you're still using it. Now, if you're like me, a very self-sufficient guy, it's like, hey, man, I want to be a one-man band, man. And it's like that's, that also is very beneficial because, again, you understand that now. I, I, think, I think there's a there's – a, a project balance, I think. There are some sure. projects where I like, even with okay, I am drawing now. Doesn't mean that like I, I feel I'm confident enough in anything that that I am doing some of my own illustration. But for some things, I know I'm not. I don't even have the right, I don't have the right tools for that. And I know sure. I know other people that do have the right tools. And I can actually now, I understand it enough, a lot better now, so I can give art direction in enough of a way that. I can let my fellow artists around me be creative and at the same yeah. time and at the same but at the same time like give them a clear idea where i want to go with it and, and that's and that's yeah. what and that's a uh i think i think that's i think some some branching out i think everybody has to do it i, I agree with you but i think the purposes for each person is a little different i think with you it feels like you, you, you want to be like Phil Collins, man. You want to do it all. And I'm not. I actually, um, when it comes to music, drums is drums is what I want to do. I like to sing, but like I don't really. I'm. I don't want to be in front of people. I don't like to be the center of attention. Interesting. Um, when it comes to writing, uh, I think I think I'm the kind of person I like. I like collaboration. I've always been really good at working with other people. Um, and uh you know that's what, like comics seem to be the thing that uh that i enjoy more than anything because i get to work with an artist so we're sort of co-creating things together like when i was making uh um like I, I i have nothing published yet but the first comic uh that i've ever made it's done and i'm about to start a kickstarter for it in april it's, um, cool. it's called apex and uh the artist i got was a guy from uh from rio in brazil and uh immensely talented guy like just amazing i can't believe that i got a hold of this dude like it's, it was just pure luck basically that his calendar was free at the time that i needed him and uh i found like the thing that made it work well was that uh, i had a vision for the world but i wanted to see what he thought it looked like you know what i mean like i was comfortable with him showing me uh like he'd be like so what are you thinking about this and i'd be like okay so i'd send him some reference images like when we're talking so it's based uh in a city that's built on the great pacific garbage patch okay so it's like in the in the future like 100 years in the future and so the idea is it's like a mixture of of uh industrial and uh and old nature because the patch smashed into southeast asia and so the jungle has started kind of mutating and growing onto the onto the patch so I was like, I want it to look like it was cobbled together by poor people because that's really who built it. But there should also be trees incorporated in certain spots and that kind of thing as well. And so I sent him some reference images and he just went for it. And 
like beyond that, I didn't want to give him a lot of uh, direction. I wanted to see what his mind could invent because I got to trust somebody. Like we were talking about specialization. He's the guy that knows how to do art. I like if I had an artistic bone in my body, I would draw something for him and show him what I meant. But like, I can't do that. I can describe things with words. So like, I need to lean on him for that. And it means that um, I can focus on dialogue and character development and plot without having to worry about the pictures uh, not doing it justice. If it's right, it's right. If it's not, then I go, what do you like? It's missing something. What do you think we can do to tweak it? You know what I mean? Totally, totally. I, so I'm of a, I'm a few minds on this. So let's see, where do I want to go first? I'm going to ask this. Because I, sure. I interviewed a guy by the name of Christopher Moron. He does a comic called Peerless. It was Kung Fu. But he's also, okay. he's, also in, he's also in a band. And he's doing his own music, musical stuff as well. Cool. Com- comics don't really feel that different from being in a band, do it, does it? No, there's a lot of parallels. There's a lot of parallels. Um, the first band I was in, the bass player turned to me, I think it was week three, because there was a bit of a like a tense moment between the guitarist and the lead singer. And I was like, what was that about? And the bass player looked at me, he goes, being in a band's like dating five guys at the same time. And I, like, it's stuck with me ever since. And it really is. Like, you know, if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, you got to be willing to compromise. You got to be willing to stand your ground sometimes too. But there's, it's not always going to be easy. The key is like, to make sure that whatever you're working on together, whatever the project happens to be, is the focus and not your personal feelings about a, a specific thing. Now, if someone's disrespectful, that that has to be addressed, obviously, but like, or hopefully that doesn't topic, happen. Like 90% of the people you deal with are very professional and their yeah. goal is the same goal as you want. They want to do the best product possible. Yep. And those kind of disagreements are disagreements you're okay with because they might actually have a better idea than you do. I've learned that I've, I've yeah. learned that that's a... Uh, that's a good thing. Like you, you, you it's learn. A worth listening. It's a worth least listening to, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and, and even, I feel if, like, even if they're off base, you want to know where they're coming from. And I feel like good bands do that too. Like really, like smart. Are, are these bands, bands that want no stress in their lives, they do. They they they, they do that too because because mm-hmm. um, in in both businesses, the, the biggest two frustrations are creative and cash. Now sometimes you can't control the latter. But you can definitely control the former to some degree. Yeah. Like, I can control the creative to some degree here, and let's uh, let's get everybody a little more involved so they're at least happy with the work they're doing, right? right. Yeah. And totally. I, I think especially with because you're dealing with pencilers and other people that are very talented, um, you want to make sure that their direction, their um, they want it or need it as much as you do or as much as possible because right, it's your baby, but they're the ones putting in the long hours on it. So they hopefully believe in it as much as you do. Yeah. And the whole point of what they're doing is the same point as what I'm doing, which is to feel fulfilled. So if what I'm doing doesn't make, like if whatever my approach is makes them feel less inclined to put in the best work they can, then I need to change my approach. Otherwise I'm going to, you know, like I've dealt with musicians that have like a, a swelled head about things and think they, they're God's gift to the musical, you know, world. And sometimes they're very talented people, but they'll never find collaborators because people can't stand hanging out with them for more than a day or two before they want to find someone else to work with. And those people tend to be like when you were when you were mentioning that you see people with immense talent, but you don't see them going anywhere with it. Sometimes it's that they don't believe in themselves. And sometimes it's that they believe in themselves a little too much and they're not willing to go. Maybe, maybe because I don't play drums, I should not tell the drummer how to play this. Maybe I should just let him figure it out and we can talk about it and figure it out together. 